Hi everyone, I am a technical artist from IT Happy Studios and we are happy to release our new traffic system with our Megacity demo pack. So let's get started. Today I'm going to show you some basic features of our traffic system and show how you can control it. I created a new project in Unity 2021, but you can use later version as well. I installed our package which you will be installing from Asset Store with our traffic system and our Megacity pack. They are the same package. So here there is a folder, IT Happy. We should go there. Then we go to Megacity folder and there is folder scenes. We should go to demonstration traffic scene. So let's open it. As you can see here, there are really noticeable blue lines. These are Unity splines. We are using them for animation and for creating rods for our system. So if you don't want to see them, you can make them invisible by turning off gizmos and you can show them back if you will turn it on. So let's move to our sections in hierarchy. There are three. The first one is demonstration, which has all of these objects like skyscrapers or buildings or trees. And the next one is our traffic system, which we will be talking about today. And the third one is created with only Unity splines and a simple script for animating objects. So for today we don't need this part, so we will turn it off. We only need traffic system for today, but we will also have demonstration to show up all this scene. So let's move to traffic. There are two objects in children. But uh, firstly we will talk about road object. It represents all of our roads. It has in children a lot of prefabs of road sections. There are quite a bit of these objects. You can go to our Megacity folder and there is a traffic folder. In this folder you can find prefabs. And in prefabs, road. And there are different prefabs of our roads. So you can see how they are made. Especially crossroads. Be careful, they are not the same as roads. And you can just uh, drag it here and combine together and create some new roads. So all of them must be placed in this object, which is representing our road on our GPU. So this is our spline connector uh, script, which is responsible for that. It's on a road object and it has some special parameters. The first parameter is merge distance. It's basically the distance in which splines are merged together. So if there, are, there is one spline ending and another spline starting, and they are really close, uh, closer than this distance basically, then they will be merged into one. So the first spline's output will be the second spline's start. Uh, so, in other sections are splines and crosses. These are buffers, uh, big buffers which are generated from our roads. And the uh, splines buffer contains a lot of uh, curves that are representing our roads. They are Bezier curve. So, you can choose them manually and edit them there too, but it's not really useful because you see there are some numbers, it's quite hard to edit them right here, so we won't do this. The thing is, uh, your splines always will be the constant size. It will be 8192 and not less and not more. And they are split into separate buffers when they are moving to our GPU. So you shouldn't change this. But they are uh, filling unused splines with empty data automatically if you will generate your roads. So another section is crosses. They have different lengths, but they also have some specific values, uh, which is a multiple of four. So if the number is not multiple of four, then we add some extra crosses, which are filled with empty data. So to handle this automatically, when you created all these rods, you should press these three dots. And here is a function called generate. If you will call this function, 
your entire road will be generated automatically into our specific data. Now it's ready to use. The next object is our traffic object. There are three components. The first one is traffic pass in my case. It might be that it's not the first, but it is there. It's responsible for binding road to our traffic system. As you can see, there is one parameter, which is our road and its plan connector script. You see, here it is in our road object. So we should drag it right here. And now I have my road attached to my traffic system. The next component is traffic spawner. You can see there are four different parameters. The first one is car prefabs. We have 34 of them. Uh, you can find them in our prefabs cars in traffic folder. As you can see, there are a lot of them. You can also add some more cars. You can get them from our assets and create with the same examples as here. And you can add them right here. So these car prefabs will be randomly spawned around our traffic. Now let's move to next parameter, it's spawn distance. Spawn distance is responsible for how much distance there will be between two cars on the same line. So when cars are spawned, there are some cars that are spawning in front and some in the back of another car and they must have at least 10 meters right now between each other. So the next parameter is car root. Car root is an object which is responsible for collecting all of our instantiated cars. So when cars are instantiated, they become children of this object. And uh, I have it attached here. It tells us randomly if we should spawn or not should spawn car in exact point. So if I will turn probability to one, cars will be spawned in all possible points of this traffic. And uh, if I will turn it to zero, there will be no cars anymore. So I, I prefer to put it somewhere in 0 0.5 position. So let's move to our traffic manager. In our traffic manager script, you can see there are three parameters. This script is basically responsible for driving our traffic around the roads. So all cars are moved from here. And there are three parameters. The first one is our compute shader, which is this traffic compute shader. You can find it in traffic scripts compute. It's here. We use compute shaders because we are driving our traffic by GPU. So it's really efficient and multi-threaded. So the next parameter is, is running. If you will toggle this off, then your cars won't be moving anymore. The third parameter is car spacing. And it tells us how much distance there must be in front of this car. So if the back car is going to the front and there is a front car, and if there is at least 12 units between them. In my case, you can change this number. Then the back car will be trying to stop. So that's basically it. We have seen all of our scripts and all of our components for our traffic system. Now let's try to run it. So I will put here a full screen scene mode and I will turn off gizmos. You can turn on full screen scene mode with shift and space. And now I will run my game. So as you can see, the traffic is running really smoothly. 
we have a decent FPS because of our GPU power. So go check it. You can upgrade your package if you already have it. Or you can buy our Mega City Pack with all of these buildings in our asset store.